Thank you. All right, I'm going to put this back. I have a terrible start with back. 187 so followed by 133. Hi, Jenny. Baz Bammy boy. Congratulations. Baz. <laughs> Sorry. I love him. <laughs> we love you too, honey. How's it feel? I thought you were in Australia, for heaven's sake, making I some am. movie. I am, but I was allowed out on good behaviour. So I came up um, and I go back on Tuesday. I was allowed out for five days. So tell me about creating these designs. You know, what was your inspiration? Sure, the books and comics and all that stuff, but what was the, what was the crux of it? The script, because that's where I always start from, the storytelling from the script. And there was a lot of the looks were in the script, not what they'd look like, but the fact they would happen, like the trash dress. And, um. So also, I have to be honest, I was there in the 70s, and in fact, 77 was probably my heyday of actually buying clothes and having a relatively good figure and going to places like Bieber and knowing about Vivian Westwood, although I couldn't afford her, but I was quite, you know, around. So I had a real memory of that time which was lovely, um, especially when I could see all my supporting artists dressed and that suddenly thought, God, I'm actually, I'm back there. They were so brilliantly done. Um, but the arc of the Estella Cruella costume is very clear in a way. She starts as obviously a very creative and rebellious small child who then becomes this extraordinary designer and then becomes someone who could possibly in 25 years be Glenn Close. That was my sort of thought. It wasn't like we were actually going to do an Anthony Powell look, but, but there was a sort of chance that you could go off in that direction if they wanted to. Uh, 133 followed by 184. Hi, um, Ahis with BuzzFeed over here. Um, I loved Cruella, I love the costuming, I love the motif of the red, white, and uh, black. And I was just curious if there was like any specific um, you know, costuming details or like any nods or any references that, you know, viewers may or may not have missed that you were able to sneak into the costuming for either Emma's, for either Emma's character, either of the Emmas. <laughs> well, I think the thing I tried to do with Emma Thompson was to give her a very consistent look and make sure that the work she did in her atelier, her warehouse, her workshop, was very much still in the, in the, style of the House of Baroness because I always think an audience feels safer and they just believe it then far more. So her look sort of developed out of fittings um, and the asymmetric thing came out of just I think the very early fittings when Jane Law, the most amazing costume maker who did all her um, clothes so it was very much just her, uh, her look. Um, went asymmetric on something, we thought, oh, well, that's her, isn't it? So then it was almost easy if you used really sculptural fabric, something quite thick to drape. Um, and the other Emma, um, no, I don't think there was anything, I mean, it, it, it's quite a clear story. So it was in the fun of finding all the stuff, and some of it's real vintage, and some of it's, um, we made, or obviously we made loads of it, but there is some bits of my memories of being growing up in London in 1970. 184 followed by 221. Right here, congratulations. What a wonderful film, and the color palette. It's always the red, the black, and the, and the white, but you used other colors to really make it very modern. How was that decision made? I, I think a lot of what I do is instinctive. I read the script, I make my notes, I look at a huge amount of research, and out of that just comes an instinct for where it should go. I mean, obviously I was working with Craig, with Nadia, with um, Fiona Crombie to find, so we were all on the same page with the looks, but the colours just seem to be right for Corella, and like the red dress when she burns off, the white cape is the obvious colour to use at a black and white ball if you want to stand out. All right, we have 221 right here in front followed by 199. Hi, Jenny, Michael Adato from the Sydney Morning Herald. I wonder if you can talk about how dramatic the shift is to go from Cruella, there's a, there's a couple of films in between, but to go from Cruella to Furiosa. Do you know, I've done it all my life. I mean, I've gone from 
one job to another and they've been so different, which is actually the joy of the job. And I read the Sydney Morning Herald. I was doing it in England, so I felt, you know, before I came out, so I had a sort of feeling for Australia. Um, but no, I mean, it's great. And obviously I've worked on Mad Max Fury Road, so I know the dynamic and I know George and I know our wonderful workroom. Um, but, you know, that, that's what I do. I, I leap around. All right, 199, followed by our, our remote press room. Hey, Jenny, uh, Matt Donnelly from Variety. Congratulations. Um, you made some really incredible remarks last June around the release of this film about uh, costume designers sort of being cut out of merchandising deals. And when it comes to the inspiration for your costumes and how they trickle down through places like Target, high-end places like Rag and Bone, I'm curious if you've had any substantive conversations with your representatives, with your guild, about how to change this for the many costumers. Many of them are women. Um, and then also, if you could tell us about your cuff that says naked without us. Thank you. It, this is, says, um, I am woman, hear me roar. And here we have naked without you, um, which is the guild, um, you know, um, thing. Yes, I did. And I had a bit of interplay with Disney, with Alan Bergman and Alan Horn, um, who I know and who are very kind. And I've kept it very, very polite. And I, I've been really waiting to see how I can help in the most positive way. I mean, with everything that's going on. I was shocked by what happened to me. I felt, I never felt so disrespected um, and realized a huge amount of things I'd never thought about because I'd always just done the job and puddled home and I don't know, played the cat, gone into the garden, whatever. And suddenly I realized there was this wealth of inequality and just walking over you. I mean, when we do a film, I furious at the moment, I'm thinking about it 24-7, and it's my ideas and my thoughts, and suddenly they own it. And it doesn't seem quite right, but I don't want to be, and I didn't think tonight was the right time to be political with everything that's going on in the world. It's far worse things happening, and obviously Ukraine, and, but in, in so many things, it's bad what's happening. So, but yes, I, it's not gone away. I think they may have felt it's gone away, but it hasn't. All right, next up in our remote press room, we have Aniko in Hungary. There will be a slight delay. You'll hear it. Sorry? Aniko from Hungary. Oh. Aniko from Hungary. Hi, Jenny. Hi. I, hi, I'm actually in Los Angeles, and we spoke a while ago. We did. And I want to congratulate you on the Grand Slam you just won. Thank you. How does it feel to have won BAFTA and the Oscars? I, I find it quite odd in, in one way, but I'm so thrilled for my team because it absolutely cements the fact that they were the best in the world. And what they did and did for me and did for the film was extraordinary in terms of you know, their sheer creativity and generosity in what they, the ideas they produced and their blooming skill. Um, I had some of the most, you know, the top people, which Claire Sprague got this extraordinary team together, and she is my plus one tonight. But um, it, it really is absolutely wonderful for them. Hopefully they realize, you know, it's them, not just me. Thank you so very much, and a huge big congratulations to you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Women in Entertainment. Hi, Jenny, can you hear me? Yes, marvelously, thank you. Yes, con congratulations, thank you so much. My name is Sheila, I'm with Wine, Women in Entertainment. I just had a, just a, I love your work. I just wanna know what inspires you? A good story is what inspires me. A good director and a good actor um, obviously is fantastic, but you know, if it's a really good story and you can get your teeth into it, and in a way I just love, as I said before, the variety of what I do, um, so I find that pretty inspiring. But I think I'm moving slowly into a slightly more educational world, perhaps. Um, I do rather enjoy lecturing and, and talking about what I do, so it might sort of, I, I find that quite inspirational. Um, I'm working with students and young people, so who knows? I mean, I probably won't stop designing, and I do have a mortgage to pay for the next four years, so let's get real, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting what, how, you, how you change. Thank you. Wonderful. 
And our final question is from the Los Angeles Times. Hi, Jenny. Sonia Kelly from the LA Times. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so how well do you think the Academy pulled off blending the non-televised categories into the broadcast? And what do you think about the decision overall? I found it very difficult. I think what I saw, obviously, you know, because I could see them blending it, it was much, much better than I'd feared. And I certainly signed the um, thing where we all said, you know, we didn't feel it was right and felt it was very disrespectful. I think they... I think they've really got to think about it for next year, though. Um, I, I think it felt a little bit cheating on, on the people, because there's something lovely about the three presenters. I mean, they were terrific, those two um, presenters. I thought they were wonderful, Jason Mama and um, I have completely forgotten who the other one was, but they were lovely. But it was still a little bit like, dung, 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 you know, let's whip through this. Although they were funny, and they, they said, but then the minute um, the actual women came on, um, Amy Schumer and, and those, you know, it just went into a different world, I thought. That's my th feelings on the matter, but I, it's not for me to say, but I think it would be better if they could find a better way of, if they need to shorten the show, shortening it, but um, not possibly that when It was odd that it was crafts, although there were some pretty serious crafts in there. Anyway, that's my thought. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you.